everyone loves Dwayne Allman, but what about the other guy? Dickie Betts was great too. What made his style unique? Let's check it out and put some of his play into our play. You may have been introduced to the Almond Brothers through their amazing live album, Live at the Fillmore, or maybe through Eat a Peach, also incredible. But I first heard them on Brothers and Sisters on the song Jessica. Now that was a Dickie Betts song, made after Dwayne had already died. I was instantly smitten by Dickie's unique style of lead, so dynamic and emotional, yet at the same time so simple too. Now, I don't mean to imply simple isn't good. In fact, I think simplicity is often a sign of greatness. And Dickie brought blues and even jazz influences into the Almond Brothers in songs like In Memory of Elizabeth Reed. but it was his country influences and distinct style on songs like Jessica, Ramblin' Man, and especially Blue Sky that really drew me in. So what made his style unique? Let's have a look. Here's a chord progression we'll use in a backing track that's similar to Blue Sky's solo section. It's just an E and an A, a one chord and a four chord played over and over again. First, instead of using the minor pentatonic, giving a heavy blues sound like this, Instead, Dickie primarily used the major pentatonic with a little twist. Here's the E major pentatonic, but Dickie added one note to it. The A. But why add that note, the A? What does it do for you? Well, it does a lot. First, it gives you a great note to resolve on for the A chord, the root. Second, it breaks up the monotony of pentatonic scales have of two notes per string and gives you three on one of them. So you can do things like this. But Dickie wasn't all about scales. No way. He had and has, he's still around, a number of trademark tricks that you can easily add to your play. First, he often doubled notes like this in his play. And you can easily practice that just by playing two notes on every scale tone when you play a scale like this. Great picking practice. But that's not all. Dickie often used pedal notes in his play, like this. Here's an example. So what's going on? I'm playing this G sharp every other note as I play through the scale. Or I play the rest of the notes. And you can play that anywhere you want. You could play it up here, for example. It gives a real neat effect that Dickie often used in his play. But probably his most recognizable signature is what I call his shuffle picking. Now some people call this his stutter picking. I think he got it from imitating fiddle players. Bluegrass players use it a lot, but electric players not so much, and certainly not much at the time. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. A lot of players find this tough, but I think you just need to take it slowly and be consistent. So here's how I do it. I always use a downstroke on the lower string, and I use a pull off the last time on the upper string, so that sets me up for that downstroke on the lower string again. 
If you practice it slowly, you will get it. But I think the main thing about Dickey's style is the striving to do more with less. And there's a lesson right there. Instead of learning new scales or arpeggios or modes, take the time to learn to do more with what you already know. Dickey's solos weren't complex harmonically or note-wise, but they captivate us nonetheless. So here's an example done in his style using the backing track that we talked about before. You can get the tab from the link in the description below. If you want more, more styles of the masters, more tips, more insights, more licks and tricks, click here. The classic masters had a knack for getting the most out of this miracle of wooden strings that we call the guitar. So click here. I'll see you in the next video and I'll see you on down the road.